Greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to I'm Being Frank again. I was on uh, Gurney Journey the other day, and I noticed he had a very interesting post. And that post was about how do you feel about a teacher working on your artwork, especially, uh, I would imagine, especially with a live model or, or in a class situation. And uh, there are almost 50 comments, so that particular uh, post touched a big nerve. You, it, uh, the post ran the gamut of uh, I don't really like it to I think it's great. Let me, uh, I didn't add a comment because I came in late. I just kind of went through all his recent posts because I've been doing other things. But uh, I wanted to add to that mix because I was taught by uh, an academician, Theodore N. Lucas. He was actually, I had the privilege that he was actually trained in the academy. Uh, he studied at, at the uh, Chicago Art Institute and then he went to the Beaux Art in, in, in Paris and he actually won the, the Prix de Rome. I mean how many people actually studied with somebody who, who won the Prix de Rome? And um, he would say that they would, let's say they were working on a figure. Uh, they could be working on a figure with a live model for about a week or two and then the master would come in and if he actually touched your artwork, it was considered, at least this is the story he told us, it was considered a privilege. In other words, the master painter, whoever that could be, how about this, just imagine Bougereau walking in and he selects your painting and he's going to do some corrections on your painting, okay? That would be an honor. I mean, you've got an instant Bougereau right there on your canvas, of course, it's a little bit of you, a little bit of him. And uh, there's a slight possibility that you're going to pass off his work as yours, but if you're smart, you know that that, that was the master's work. It, it, that will give you now a different, that example will give you a different frame of reference in, 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 in the sense that it was a, a privilege, an honor to have the master work on your painting, to see how he said, how he saw it. And I think we've lost some of that in our current culture. We think so much of our artwork, especially. Uh, the ego attached to our artwork. Think of uh, a painting class as uh, a workshop, as, as a laboratory. And if somebody wants to show you on your precious little painting how he would do it, again, remember you're in their class, so you're in their domain, their sanctuary. Um, personally, I would allow them to do that because I want to see how they go about doing that. Um, so we've lost some of that in our me generation culture where you know my work is so sacred it's, it's so much me and so much a part of, of my individuality that um, horrors if, if any teacher should should uh, apply their their pencil or their brush to my canvas and I you know what I now that I've been teaching port portraiture I have seen more students actually want me to work over their paintings I've, o I've always asked them uh, I've explained to them how, how to look at, 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 at a painting and how to correct it. And I would say nine times out of 10, the student usually says, can you show me? I said, you sure you want me to work on your painting? He goes, absolutely. And oftentimes, probably nine times out of 10, the student usually keeps that as a reference. I mean, that's, that's think of it as just part of the cost of taking the class. They, they see how, would I, how I would have approached the subject matter. And that's how people learn, again, we're in the business where people do learn by seeing. I have learned so much by going to some paint outs, especially the last uh, 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 Plain Air Painters of America uh, show down in Lodi a couple years ago, just by watching artists paint and see how they apply a paint to canvas. Uh, you can get to the point now where you can see other artists, and if, and if you're looking for something very specific, you can you can learn a lot. So. Uh, that, that being said, that, that, that's my thought on the, on the matter, and um, I mean, there are times that I've, I've, seen, and I've seen it, especially in the, in the cartoon that Jim Gurney put on the day following, where some students will ask uh, the teacher to make corrections, and then when the, uh, the teacher really makes corrections, they're pulling out the hair and going, what have you done? I didn't think it was that bad. Well, there you go. That's, that's the cost of doing business in, in, in this art world. Anyway. Um, been kind of uh, busy on, on a little uh, semi-mural project. Let me show you some sketches. Uh, this is going to be an eight foot by eight foot painting. This is a, a little pastel sketch of some eucalyptuses in Tiburon, California. Uh, we're doing uh, FX and I are working a team working on this together. You can see some of these are little sketch ideas uh, for a eight foot by eight foot mural. So I'm still coming up with more ideas on that. 
And so, uh, anyway, I just wanted to do uh, a short little uh, talk today, a short little post. My, I didn't want, I don't want to stress my wrists on typing. I, I find that every time I type, it stresses the uh, inside of uh, my tendon. So, uh, and today I'm getting actually a massage, and uh, and here in Auburn. I don't know what it's like in New York City or around around the country, but here in Auburn, a 50 minute massage costs you about $38. What a deal! That's why people come here. Um, it's, it's kind of overcast, so I'll talk to you later. Uh, this post is a little bit over five minutes. Bye.